Hello. Um, I don't know what I'm really going to say right now, but I thought I should do some kind of an update. Um, quite a few people have messaged me in the last few days, kind of sending, uh, you know, messages of thought, messages of thanks. And uh, so I thought it would be good to do a bit of an update. Um, firstly, to anyone who has emailed me, commented, messaged me, I mean, it blew my mind the amount of people that reached out to me uh, I'd say 500, 600 maybe people reached out to me, which just, I could not believe it at the time, but you know, it just made me realize that I'm so, so, so thankful for this community and for all the people that love and care about me. Thank you so much. It really did mean the world. And I really did respond and read every single one. Um, so thank you so much. That really means so much to me. Um, 17,000 people have read that blog post, um, which is crazy. Um, I didn't think that many people would be interested in me for one, um, but it gives me hope that it's maybe being shared, maybe kind of being brought to light a bit more because I could not believe the amount of people that are going through this right now. Like, okay, maybe not so much the, you know, going from a, a elite professional re level to stopping running completely, but the amenorrhea issue I mean, I can't believe how many people are going through it. It's just blown my mind. And it, it isn't just it isn't just people at high mileage. It isn't just runners. It isn't just, you know, one thing. There's so many things that come into this. And I am determined to be the one to bring awareness to this or to work with people who I think are going to bring awareness to this. And so I've got some stuff coming. I'm working. There's a lot of publishers, um, what, writers who are writing stories about this. So I think they are going to be... Um, ideal people for me to um, kind of help put in my army to spread the words um, but yeah I, uh, I guess where's my update so I've already done two minutes and I haven't even said anything yet <laughs> sorry that's me um, four weeks today of no running um, and honestly uh, kind of I don't, I don't know I struggled with this at first but I haven't missed it. Um, I cannot believe I've gone from running 90 miles a week to running zero miles a week and not missed it, but somehow it's true. Um, and um, I've done about five strength training workouts with my strength coach, Drew, um, after I think I took two or three weeks completely off. Must have been two weeks. And then I've just done a few workouts with him. I also went to a trampolining class with my friend Morgan, which was fun, but other than that, I haven't done any exercise, and to be honest, I haven't wanted to. Um, I did do some walks in the first few weeks, but part of me thinks even the walks, I couldn't do it as like a, I'm going to go for a 20-minute walk to get outside. I was like, if I'm going to go for a walk, I have to make the most of it, so I made myself go for like an hour. Well, it wasn't, I made myself, I, I like said, well, I'm going to get something out of this, so I went for an hour. But since then, I haven't been on a walk in probably a week and a half, haven't really wanted to. I've been embracing it. I've spent a lot of hours just relaxing on the couch, really trying to embrace this. And um, overall, I'd say it's going going well. You know, obviously, if I don't miss running, I made the right choice. My heart did need a break from it. But that being said, I think everyone kind of thought that I was going to step away from the running world completely. But actually, even though I'm not running, I'm just as excited for everyone else. Like I was watching Boston yesterday and I wasn't thinking, oh, I wish I was running, but I was so excited for the people that were running PRs. And, you know, in my um, Facebook group community for the Running For Real community, which I'll talk about later, and anyone's welcome to join if you want to, um, I talked about um, how I was um, really excited for everyone running. And when they were putting their results up, it was making me so happy. So I really still want to be involved in the world. I still want to be around running but I think I pulled away at the right time I think if I had kept going I would have ended up hating running so I feel like I made the right choice um, with that um, what have I been doing well I've really mostly been trying to just find joy in things so I think I've realized lately that there was a difference between finding joy and finding happiness I think I was chasing happiness which you know it sounds like that's the thing we all want and we should be kind of going for but then I think what the way I see it is like happiness was me running a PR, me crossing the finish line, smiling, knowing that I did my best. That's happiness. But then that entire build up was just kind of a get to the happiness. So it wasn't, you know, they say it's like the pursuit of happiness. I was just chasing the happiness at the end. And 
Whereas now I'm trying to find things that bring me joy in the moment. So like I went to that trampolining class. That was so much fun. Morgan and I were smiling the whole time. You know, if I, uh, another thing I did, so when we went to brunch uh, after that trampolining class, they had, um, they had like egg options, which if I was running, um, racing, I probably would have picked an egg option to get like good protein and be healthy and look after my body and fuel it correctly. Had I have a race, you know, sometime in the re- in the realm of being in the future, I probably would have gone for blueberry pancakes because it's kind of what I want, but it's still kind of somewhat healthy. But this time I went for, they had um, <laughs> five pancakes with chocolate chips, bananas and peanut butter sauce. And I ate it and I loved it. And like, you know, we've been, we've been really embracing the food side of things and allowing me to like kind of go off the rails and have whatever the heck I want. Um, And it's been fun. It's been nice to not have that restriction and, um, you know, just kind of not worry about like consequences essentially. Um, and so overall I've been enjoying that. I've been trying to find joy in things like, you know, if I'm trying to do work in an afternoon and, and I feel like, you know, what would make me happy right now watching the Great British Bake Off, then I will stop what I'm doing and watch that. And I know that's not realistic in our lives for a lot of the time, um, but you know, and I'll make up things later in the day or another point, but I've been just kind of trying and chase joy. Like what brings me a smile to my face right now? That's what I want to do. And so that's that. All right. On to the tough part. Um, the weight gain. Um, yes, I have definitely noticed a weight gain. I don't know if you can see it right now. I think a lot of it might be kind of in my head or maybe not in my head, but only I notice it. Um, but it's definitely there. Um, let's just say I, it's visible. Um, my close family and friends have said they can see it. Not that they think I look bad. Um, a lot of people have actually said I look good, that I look like I'm happier and like healthier and glowing and kind of got a spark. And so I feel like that's a good thing overall. Um, I'm not going to lie. It's tough at times. Um, I definitely can see my muscle fading away, particularly in my legs. And I can see my belly really coming forward. Um, some of the girls in a, in a group I'm in, a hypothalamic amenorrhea group I'm in, talk about it being like a kangaroo pouch. Like you're building a little pouch for your little roo to sit in, which I like thinking of it that way. And you guys know I like the five-star baby hotel analogy. And then the other thing I've been trying to think of is like my belly's going to be like a little pillow, a nice little comfy pillow because you wouldn't want a baby sleeping on like a futon with like bars sticking through. So I've been trying to like keep the analogy the right way. And even if it's not going to be straight away that Steve and I start trying, like even if it does take six months, a year or even longer, at least I've got my body in a healthy place to where I can start cycling again, which like I said, is my primary goal right now. But having that analogy kind of, kind of helps in my brain. And, um, another thing that I've been reading is this book, um, no period now what by, um, Nicola Rinaldi, um, Stephanie Buckler and Lisa Waddle. Um, so good. I will put um, links wherever I, wherever I share this. Um, and actually on my podcast, I was going to talk about this in a minute, I had um, Nicola and Heidi Greenwood on my podcast, which will be released in a few weeks. Two hours we talked for, but we go went over so much and it's such a good episode. And, you know, I know some of the guys might be thinking, oh, whatever, like, I don't want to listen to that. But I think you're going to learn a lot. I think everyone can learn a lot. The other thing I've been doing for um, kind of rough moments, um, which it does happen, you know, like I, like I said, I've gone off the rails. I'm eating whatever the heck I want, which is great. And it's really kind of refreshing not to have that, like, oh, am I doing the right thing? Am I putting the right things in my body? And kind of enjoying like loads of Easter sweets and enjoying like massive bowls of ice cream and just kind of letting loose a little bit and just getting rid of some of my control. Um, The other thing I've been doing is I bought a journal um, and in it I've been writing to my future child. Um, So in the next few years, um, I can keep writing in this, um, as I kind of going through this and one day I can either give it to them or I can just, you know, um, keep it for myself to read of kind of this experience. Cause I don't want this to go to waste. And like I said, I really want to go after this and kind of put the word out. I really want to get a big publication like Vogue or Glamour or like, I mean, Huffington Post, maybe, I don't know. I want to get a big publication. I'd love to kind of chronicle this journey. And if someone knows someone who could help me with this, I really want to share this journey as I go from this like 
perfect chiseled not that I think I was perfect I've told you before that I have um, everyone has self self conscious issues but you know what other people see as the perfect chisel body and then as I lose that muscle fitness and I kind of gain weight and move towards like a healthy body um, like in the traditional sense for like your reproductive system to actually work um, it's a completely different body so if I can learn to love my body as it goes through that transition I really want to help this um, get out there with the body image issue so I'm trying to figure out how I want to do that I'd like to kind of chronicle my journey um, even if I just do it for my own self so if anyone has any ideas let me know um, okay what else do I have here for my um, overall I've enjoyed just this experience I feel like I've relaxed a lot more um, and uh, you know I feel like I've chilled out a bit more and I feel happier overall um, just you know obviously there's ups and downs obviously there's moments where I'm like what am I doing but for the most part I've just been embracing it and honestly I feel like a giant weight has been lifted off my shoulders by kind of saying this to the world and stop not hiding <laughs> hiding who I am anymore um what else so the running for real podcast launched on Friday it's been doing so well um it's so what was that Friday Saturday Sunday Monday it's now Tuesday and it's got like 16,000 downloads which I was so happy with um for five days not even five days but um, it's been doing really well and um, I'm really proud of how that's grown and I want to thank everyone who has shared it and I hope more people continue to listen to it because um, I think it'll be worthwhile. Um, what else have I been doing? Uh, like I said, I've had no period now what the woman from there and Heidi Greenwood, who has an amazing story. Um, Drew and I, my strength coach, have been working on a strength training program um, for runners and we've been working really hard on it and I really, really think it's going to be unlike anything you've ever seen so if you are struggling to find a strength coach this is going to be for you um, and I'm also working on some stuff for injured runners to do with depression and the mental side of things because I think that's another thing that's neglected so overall I'm really spending a lot of time trying to help other people with their running because I know how good it feels to accomplish your goals and just because my joy isn't in running right now myself I can still give joy it give, brings me joy to see happiness in other people so that's what I'm going for right now um, I don't know how long this video has been 12 minutes so not as long as the last one but it shouldn't be um, if you want to follow what I'm up to you can go to the usual uh, sources so Instagram Twitter Facebook if you go to um, facebook.com forward slash running for real that is going to give you the Facebook page you should, you can also message me if you want to join the group uh, I'm creating a private Facebook com community it's free to join anyone can join I'd love if you would join um, we've got about six or seven hundred people in there so far I'd love to see you in there it's just a fantastic community it's growing pretty quickly um, and feel free to reach out to me tina at tinamuir.com I'm proud of myself that I got back every email of someone who responded to me it took a while but I did it so um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I want to thank you again from the bottom of my heart for all your support and love it really makes this process so much easier and um, yeah I'll keep you up posted and uh, talk to you soon